Just four days away from the NFL's Final Four taking the field on Conference Championship Sunday. Mm -hmm. We welcome you back to the early line live right here all across the Sports Grid Network. It's Ben, it's Donnie, and Boomer Esiason joins us live on this Wednesday on the early line mm -hmm. to forecast Conference Championship weekend. The two matchups that we have first in the AFC and the NFC and a little bit of the coaching carousel around the mm -hmm. NFL as well. Boomer, thank you so much for taking the time to join us here on this Wednesday. Ben and Donnie, great to be with you as always. Uh, so let's get started. So, Boomer, just about an hour and a half ago on your own show, Boomer and Geo on WFAN, you were talking about the Lions offensive coordinator, Ben Johnson. Of course, his Detroit team in action in the NFC Championship game on Sunday evening in Santa Clara against the 49ers. And you said that Ben Johnson is going to be the next head coach <laughs> of the Washington <laughs> Commanders. So, of course, the Lions in action on Conference Championship Sunday. To the best of your knowledge, how is this process? playing out between the commanders and Ben Johnson? Well, I, I think that there's a relationship there between Adam Peters, their new GM, and Ben somewhere along the line. Uh, I knew that when uh, when he was named GM that uh, it was a really good chance that Ben would definitely be the head coach of the commanders. Now, that hasn't been officially uh, put out there by the commanders because it can't because Ben is still working. But I firmly believe in my heart that he will be the next coach of the Washington commanders. And if I'm wrong, I'll come on here when Ben's uh, season is over, whether that be all the way through the Super Bowl or after they play the 49ers this weekend and, and apologize. But I do believe in my heart that he is going to be hired by the commanders. And that's why I went on my show this morning and basically said it was a slam dunk that he's going to be the head coach. So hopefully I'm not going to look like an idiot in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, by the way, getting a head coach there of his ilk. I mean, he runs great schemes. We know that from the Detroit Lions. And also, what a great couple of weeks here for that Washington franchise turning it around. And maybe in a few years, Boomer, they can wind up in AFC-NFC Championship weekend, which brings us to the games this weekend. Before we break them down, Boom, any chances here to take a look at these four teams and say, you know what, a little surprised this team got here this far or how they actually got here? No, not at all. As a matter of fact, um, you know, I guess the Lions are probably maybe a little bit of a surprise because I don't think anybody thought that they would be in the NFC Championship game. But we all knew that they were going to get better. What we didn't know was going to be how good their rookie class was. And their rookie class mm -hmm. has turned out to be tremendous, especially on the offensive side of the ball. But you could also say the same thing about Jack Campbell in the middle of the defense. But to me, their offense, and I asked Frank Reich, my buddy, uh, about the offenses in the NFL. And I said, who's got the best offense right now in the NFL? And I wasn't talking really about players. I was talking more about scheme because I think Mike McDaniel down in uh, Miami and, of course, Kyle Shanahan out in San Francisco run great schemes. And I also thought Matt LaFleur, we saw the growth of Jordan Love over the last few weeks of the season. I thought he had some great concepts too. But without a heartbeat even – uh, being had, he said Ben Johnson in Detroit runs the best offense right now scheme-wise. And I think that the players that he has to work around with Amon Ross St. Brown, Jamison Williams, of course, Jameer Gibbs, and David Montgomery and Sam Laporta, I mean, it's a plethora of great players that you can actually move around on a chessboard, which is what he's doing. So maybe a little surprised that they are this good with this offense right now, but I love the coaching Unfortunately, I think both coaches last week, uh, Detroit uh, with um, Dan Campbell and, of course, Todd Bowles in Tampa Bay, uh, terrible coaching at the end of the game with the time management and everything else. Uh, but Dan Campbell moves on, and I, I think he uh, it deserves a, a lot of credit for what he's uh, been able to accomplish there. Year number three for Dan Campbell in Detroit. The Lions into the NFC Championship game for the first time since 1991's NFL season. The Chiefs, though, very accustomed to being on in action on conference championship weekend. Six years now with Patrick Mahomes as the starting quarterback boomer in six AFC Championship game appearances. In your estimation... How would you describe this six-year run KC has seen with Mahomes as its starting QB? Well, it's incredible. It's not Tom Brady-esque just yet, but he's getting close. I think Tom had eight straight uh, AFC champions. This is going to be his sixth. Uh, you know, and who better to go into Baltimore and try to beat that defense and that team than the best quarterback in the league, and that is Patrick Mahomes. He's unflappable. You know, watching him last week, I think they ran only 40 
three real plays. I think there were four kneel downs that they had, and they should have had 34 points if McCall Hardman doesn't fumble the ball out of the end zone. Think about the efficiency, the explosiveness, the over 20-yard plays uh, that they were able to run in Buffalo in front of that fan base under those conditions. They didn't have one false start. You know, this wasn't like Houston going into Baltimore last week with a rookie quarterback, a shaky offensive line, guys jumping off size, pre-snap penalties. You could see just what it takes to win a game on the road and how difficult it is to do that. And that's why I think this game going into Baltimore with Patrick Mahomes is so interesting because you have two of the best defenses in football. And Baltimore, I think, uh, got the ball 31 times on turnovers on defense during the regular season. It's one of the reasons why they were able to blow out so many good teams this year. The one thing that the Chiefs don't do is they don't turn the ball over, especially in big games. That's not been their M.O., and it's certainly not going to be the M.O. for them going into this game against Baltimore. Let's get right into that AFC Championship matchup mm-hmm. this Sunday, 3 p.m. Eastern. Mm-hmm. That's going to be Mahomes and Jackson lining up here. Of course, it's Kansas City and Baltimore. Line currently sitting here, Boom, minus 3.5 as a favorite towards the home team, the Baltimore Ravens, and a total of 44.5. Is there a particular matchup that you're really waiting to see in this game? You know what? We talked last week on the NFL Today on CBS, and Phil Simms brought up a really good point. The weakness, we thought the weakness of the Kansas City Chiefs, and we still think the weakness of the Kansas City Chiefs are their two offensive tackles. But they played really, really well last week on the road in Buffalo. So if they play like they played in Buffalo, Mm -hmm. now all of a sudden you have a full team. You have a good offense. You have a quarterback that's not going to be harassed into making mistakes. And you have a guy in Patrick Mahomes who loves – Uh, the challenge of something like this. So I love the the Chiefs and the three and a half points here. I know a lot of people are going to be looking at Baltimore's year and they're going to say, you know, they beat all these winning teams. They beat them by double digits. They should be able to do that again here. But they didn't see each other during the year. And Kansas City Mm -hmm. has a second-ranked defense in the NFL. They are more of a defensive and running team than they really are a passing team. But when they need to make plays, they got the best quarterback in the league, in my eyes, uh, to deal with all of the uh, the chaos that Mike McDonald's defense brings to uh, the home field, if you will, for the Baltimore Ravens. So I like the Chiefs in the three and a half. I'm not so sure that they're going to win the game. But I felt this way last week. I took them and the points, and I thought it was going to be a one-point game one way or the other. And it was almost turned out to be 31 to 30 because I thought that's what it was going to be. Uh, but I do like the Chiefs and the points on the road here. The Chiefs with Patrick Mahomes as its starting quarterback, as an underdog since he became the starter in 2018, 8-5 eight and five outright as an underdog. So Mahomes makes his sixth consecutive AFC championship game start. It is the first AFC title game for Lamar Jackson. Boomer, as you know well, when titles are on the line, the focus is on the quarterbacks. What do you expect out of the quarterback play in the Charm City on Sunday afternoon? Well, you know, Lamar's different this year. You know, he's uh, taken a much more uh, aggressive leadership approach, and I think it's something that John Harbaugh totally appreciates. And what came out of that game last week against Houston is that Lamar went off in the locker room at halftime. Lamar was yelling at Ronnie Stanley, his left tackle, a couple times for missed blocks. So this is a different Lamar than what we've seen before. Now, on the field, he's still the same guy. It's still he's going to run with the ball. I don't think he was totally happy with their passing game last week, and nor should he have been because they only threw for about 157 yards or so. So I think this week he's going against a much better defense than he saw last week in Houston. It's going to be a lot tougher for him to run, I think. I think Steve Spagnuolo will have something special for him defensive-wise. I wouldn't be surprised if we see five defensive linemen rushing at times to try to keep Lamar in the pocket and make him beat you with his arm. So the, the same player that we saw – say three or four years ago when when he won the MVP and was basically uncontrollable on the field is still that player. The difference now is, is that he is committed to winning. He is a true leader of that team. So I think that's where we see the biggest difference, but I think on the field, it's still the same player it's still the same circumstances that this defense is going to find itself in. And I think this game is going to be a lot closer simply because of Kansas city's defense. Yeah, two MVPs going at it this Sunday. It's going to be fun to watch, which includes going out to Santa Clara. If you take a look at a dome team here, Boom, in Detroit, you're going to get dome-like conditions out there. 70 degrees, light winds, no rain in the forecast, a line of minus seven as a favorite at the FanDuel Sportsbook for the 49ers, and a total of 50 and a half points. Give us a look here for Detroit and San Francisco. 
All right, I like Detroit here with the points. I like San Francisco to win the game. As long as it's not raining and Brock Purdy, glove on, glove off, glove on, glove off. He, he didn't play that well last uh, week. He was all over the place, and it was raining, and I understand that. And he's probably got smaller hands. This is why they measure the hands at the combine. But uh, I expect him, he will play better this week. Uh, if Aaron Glenn blitzes him, he'll tear them up. I don't think that Debo Samuel is going to play. If he does play, I don't know how effective he would be. And that is a big loss for them. But they could still win without him. I do think that on the road, uh, Jared Goff, when he went to Dallas and he went to, uh, I think it was Chicago late in the season, he threw two interceptions on both of those games, and they lost both of those games. When he doesn't throw a pick, they usually win. I could see an interception or two here by Jared Goff, I, but I do think they cover the number, and I do think it's a high-scoring game. The Detroit Lions on the road this year, 7-2 and two against the spread, but in terms of Jared Goff in a dome, 24 touchdowns to only six interceptions this year, playing outdoors, five TDs to four picks. Narratives for both quarterbacks entering the NFC Championship game on Sunday night in Santa Clara. Boomer Esiason joining us here on this Wednesday on the early line. Breaking news and breaking down. Conference Championship weekend. Boomer, we appreciate the time. Best of luck in the travels to Baltimore this weekend. Always my pleasure, guys. Thanks. Have a good week. See you.